and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 150 of the Spirit Sundays podcast live on stage. Thank you very much for coming out. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Joining me, I have uh, Luke Kidgel, who I do the Luke and Lewis radio show with, stand-up comedian, uh, one of my best friends. Welcome, Luke. Thank you very much for having me, Lewis. No worries. And on my right, I have Christian Hull, who's uh, a, what are you, a Facebook influencer? I am so terrified right now, (laughs) is what I am, because I am am a gay 32-year-old who can't relate to either of you very much, so this will be (laughs) fun. Right, so Um, we've got a gay autistic man on the stage. (laughs) Welcome, Christian. (laughs) Thanks for setting yourself up right off the bat. Um, so, how, how... You didn't actually say what Christian does. Now everyone at home doesn't even know that he does Facebook videos <laughs> and stuff. Like, and I they're just imagining, like, for the people who are listening to the audio, they're just like, oh, gay autistic guy, cool. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> I feel like the special needs sort of person that's been brought in and you're the carers. And I'm glad we made you feel that safe. <laughs> um, There's lots of photos where, because when I smile, uh, my natural smile, which I will show you, is... <laughs> Give me a look. Oh, Forrest Gump has arrived. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so true, and I hate it. You, you get like my parents are like, no, it's a beautiful smile, and then you see it in photos, and um, I look like I have, I can't, I don't, a, a sort of type of syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents are like, run, Christian, run. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. I'm, I'm not doing any running. <laughs> Um, so, man, this is great. 150 episodes of this thing. Honestly, when I thought I started it, I didn't think I was going to reach episode 150, mainly because I'm very fucking lazy and I miss a lot of episodes. But uh, this is a milestone, man. So thank you so much for everyone who came out to this. Give yourselves a round of applause and everybody watching at home as well. Hello. That's great. Why was that funny? Because I gave the camera the finger. Because oh, okay. you were like, thanks to everyone watching at home. And I was like, fuck them. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. I agree with you. I don't know why you laughed. It was the German guy. Um, <laughs> there's a German guy here, and we don't know why he came here from Germany. <laughs> Did you come for this? Well, not necessarily. I'm here for a working holiday visa. But... He said he's here for a working holiday visa. That still doesn't answer why that. you're here, though. <laughs> he's quite attractive. <laughs> Did you, uh, did you come in to get fucked by also, Christian? I think he's autistic as well, so oh, you guys will be great. Double win! <laughs> <laughs> so why, why did you come to Australia? Uh, do the, uh, yeah, well, work and travel. Work and travel. Yeah. But you still you keep haven't saying answered that. the question. That's why you're in Australia, which is great. Welcome to our country, I'm sorry. But... <laughs> Do you listen to Lewis's podcast from Germany? Yeah, That's oh. cool. Cool, that's really cool. Thank you very much for coming, man. That's, round of applause. What's cool. your name? Oh. I didn't hear that. Round Hans. of applause for Hans. <laughs> <laughs> making shit up. What's your actual name? Hans. Mark. Mark? Yes. What a Fuck disappointing off. German name. What's your real name? <laughs> You might as well have rocked up being like, yeah, my name's fucking Damo from Switzerland. What's how's it going? Do you want a ciggy, bros? It's like when you go to school and you have the, um, oh, all right, do, edit this bit out. When you have, the, like, when you the, have, ethnic, when you have the helmet? The eth- no, yeah, the ethnics, and they, they, they're yeah. called John and Stephen and Lucy, and you're like, that's, that's not you. What, like the, the foreign exchange kids? Yeah. Yeah, I love when, when like a mega Korean dude who must have like a 30 syllable name is just like, hey, what's your name, dude? And he's like, John. <laughs> he's like, are you sure? And then you ask him to tell, you ask him to tell his real name and he says it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to call you John. Because uh, I, I don't know any of those syllables. <laughs> all right, and edit back in now. <laughs> Great. We I love have said all that. cultures. Speak for yourself. Oh, makes it sound like we don't. Oh, God. <laughs> this is career ending for me, isn't I it? I know. Fucking Germans, am I right? Um, <laughs> I would like to be fucking Germans, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, Hans. We picked the right man for the job to come on here. This is good. <laughs> Speaking of fucking, I got a, uh, a message 
on Snapchat uh, just before this show started from someone, and yes, I'm going to call you out. Someone messaged me on Snapchat and said, hey, cunt, I want you to know that I skipped out on a foursome to come to this, so it better be good. <laughs> Put your hand up. Which one was it? Oh, wow. Yeah? Hey, man. All right, what's your name? <laughs> I don't believe him. <laughs> what's your name, dude? Yeah. All right. Come up here, man. It could be from Germany. Come oh. up here. Are we going to do it on stage? Absolutely. fucking oh. I was just say, you came yeah. to a way better foursome here. <laughs> I've got Go to bring on. him because he set it up. You, he set it up. Is so he your pimp? <laughs> was he I like that you bring your there. pimp to the show. So, <laughs> I, well, hang on. Well, he set seat it up. for you. Does that, right mean, does that mean that you and him are half the foursome? <laughs> hey? <laughs> You will? No, he said he doesn't want to talk about it. Here, come and talk over into my stick over If here. you don't want to talk about that, can you explain why the fuck you have a bottle of cap hanging off your pants? <laughs> Dude, who sees someone with a bottle of cap and is like, you know what, I should get two of my mates and suck that dick. <laughs> You're dre- dressed really? Up, dressed up, so that's yeah. why. Oh, that's good. No, I really do lie. I like how you've secured it to a belt loop. I mean, you could have just worn it or left it in the car. I don't know, but you can't wear it because he's got fucking Speed Dealer Sonnies on his head. <laughs> and where would he put them? Yeah, you go yeah, back you and go back down. Thanks. Yeah. Good round of applause for... Yeah. Yeah. Skip down on a foursome for that. Have you ever, ever had a just, foursome? Just quickly. Yeah. Do you want us to blur your face? Because yes. we will. No? All right, quick. Well, ladies, hit him up if you're interested in a dude with a bottle of cap. <laughs> well, was it with three other women? I don't want to talk about it. Oh! <laughs> okay. Is that yes. like a devil's fall? Well, now I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna guess. It's either. See, no episode. This is such a fucking trend for Do my reckon? podcast. Episode 100, we heard about a girl getting gang banged in the back of a sushi shop. <laughs> And now episode 150, you've just added another person. No, he's getting gangbang in the back of a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a VB long neck up, you love. No, all right, took the cap off. <laughs> Christian's regretting saying yes to this. Too descriptive? Maybe a bit. No, no, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> So sorry. Oh. For those at home, Christian just mind masturbating. Oh yeah, you don't need to share that. <laughs> but I don't. I know. Have you experienced uh, threesomes, foursomes? I've almost had a threesome. I got this close, and then that was that never happened. Did you chicken out or no? Should... Yeah, I was just like, nah, not tonight, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, ready? And Mike laughed way too hard at that because he was also like, nah, not feeling it either, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say the closest I've ever come to a threesome was me desperately trying to get my, the rest of my radio team to fuck me and both of them saying no, so it was very close. Do, are you willing to share the actual story or no? Mark, who's? He is. Lewis. Oh, have you ever had oh, a threesome? Oh, my actual sh- I think I talked about it on a podcast with Radio Mike even. Uh, the short story is uh, two girls wanted to have sex with me as a threesome. I rocked up and then one of the girls had fallen in love with another guy. She said, I can't. And I said, that's fine. That's I believe in the power of love. She told you. Yes. Yeah. Ended up having sex with one of them. Found out the next week that uh, the dude she'd fallen in love with had given her a fake name because he was cheating on his girlfriend. And I, whoever that guy's real name is, I'll never forgive him. <laughs> Selfish. Ruined my life. Threesomes are shit. Really? Or gay ones, I find... <laughs> je- I can't compare them to a straight one. I've never mm. had a straight one, but... Oh, he got a bit <laughs> later. Um, Might have to hit the bottle, though, mate. I've had uh, three, seven, four, seven, five, seven. Five? And, yeah, five. That's not oh, a, mate, That's an orgy. Gay dude. sex is great because all men are just horny, yeah. wonderful human beings that just want to get their dicks See, out and put them into something. That's an intimidating amount of dicks. No. Like, even like this <laughs> is scaring me. Like, this is like, whoa, and then like five. <laughs> That's just impressive. But it's it's too much effort, and then you don't know what to do, and then you're. Sort I of wouldn't like, know what to oh, do. And then I'm, like, I'm sorry, I have missed you a little bit. Yeah, so <laughs> back to you, a bit of kissing. I'll, I'll kiss you next, just one second. And <laughs> is is there one person who everyone can't, like is a favourite? Is there one person oh, who's getting more? Absolutely. Have you ever been the favourite? I am never the favourite. <laughs> That's why I hate them because I'm the one where people go, "Be with you in a minute," and I'm just like, "Oh, you're like in line at Centrelink." <laughs> you're just. <laughs> Well, I just sit down, take a number, we'll get to you. 
<laughs> Are you just like in the corner, like jacking off? <laughs> like, oh. there was one where I was like, this is. A... <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, oh no, your mouth is. Uh, there's no. Oh, fr- there was no free orifices and no free wangs, and so I was just like, oh Dude, yeah, j- three, don't two, say one. Orifices. <laughs> Are you doing no shit? Like, what? isn't an orifice any hole? Yes. Yeah. So you're just doing well, ear real, stuff. Well, there's real. Yeah, or there's even only the a mouth or a. Up. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the problem with uh, with gay orgies, in my experience, is not enough holes. <laughs> yes. Not enough. <laughs> well, at least with what women, you've got three. What other holes are you working with? <laughs> well, no. Oh. Are you are you making wounds? No. No. Oh God, where is this going? <laughs> the ultimate conclusion. Hopefully, is... not in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the terms and conditions of me coming on the show. <laughs> was me. Coming in Europe. What? <laughs> oh, why? Oh my god, I'm so Christian sorry. just fucking leaves. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. So how long will we be going? Ten minutes. He's like, bottle of boy, Hans, we're leaving. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love about Christian Hull is majority of your shit online is you just making Facebook videos about the newest Coles little shop thing that mums watch, and then you come on this and you're like, so I fucked five dudes at once. <laughs> It sucks, and I'd love to fuck you against your consent. Anyway, guys, check out the new polls. My girlfriend's mum wanted to come to this, and I was like, nah. (laughs) She's like, I love Christian, and I was like, yeah, but he's going to talk about a fivesome. Uh, That's probably why she wanted to come. Mums are thirsty bitches. They love it. They froth on it. They sit there and pretend that they hate it when secretly they're just, you know, doing... Uh, well, no, I'm, no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was 
Michael Jackson themed, but no, I'm not going to say do in that situation because if you steal your car all you really want is like a, like maybe 500 bucks you don't want to kidnap a child so do you do you either turn it around and go back to where it was and give the baby back to the parent or do you just go back and leave it where you found it or do you just get out of the car and walk away like you never did it i think you just drive the car back and then try and leave it all no you just get out of the car and just leave it the police really yeah the mother so irate, obviously, and then the police would be there, and then you'd be well, fine. Well, what I'm feeling is if you return the child to the parents, 100% chance of getting caught. Yes. But if you leave the car, only like 80% chance of the baby surviving. Well, just watch for the bushes. Which is pretty good, but there's still that like 20% odds, you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't put 20, like 100 bucks, but maybe 20 bucks, right? <laughs> Sports betting. <laughs> I've got a lot of mates that are addicted to gambling. That's all I've been hearing in this group chat is just people talking about pumping their souls away. It's really depressing. Do you ever gamble? No. Uh, no. It's a really long answer. Yeah, well, like Christian it... mortgaged his house for a multi. <laughs> no, I don't have an issue. <laughs> no. No. I'm like, what's sure? the thing that, like, playing those arcade games, you know, where you win yeah. prizes? They're like, that's gambling for children. But see, I love those ones, you know, where you can win a You a gamble in the cinema. Yeah. yeah. Like, is that gambling? Is that gambling? I'm trying to win an Elsa toy. No. This is sad as shit. Have you ever that much? Uh, uh, I did when I was on a cruise because I was like, nothing to do on a boat for 12 yeah. days. I was at the casino a lot. But, like, if, I, if I'm on the mainland, that was better shit to do. Yeah, I think, you know, I found out that in Perth, they don't have poking machines in their pubs. I did go to the casino in Perth, but then my mate didn't get let in because he was wearing thongs and a singlet, and it was ambitious in hindsight. Even going I mean, that's in. basically a tuxedo in Perth, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's <laughs> If you show up with your dicks not out and in summer, that's formal. Is there yeah. enough people in Perth to turn people away? Like yeah, they want to go into a it was better just than the bouncer. I was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> just had a bottle of cap bar at one point. I don't know. You just read the first paragraph like, I'm going to do that. No, I read the headline. Oh, I can Google it and find out. Hey? Not out and walk away. Really? Did away. you do it then? <laughs> <laughs> the baby is here! You're like, somebody told me that. <laughs> Did the baby live? I read the article, baby. Well, obviously, oh, they would have had to find the baby and write about the story. Lost 20 bucks. Lost 20 Did the guy get caught? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Kidnapping and like theft. No. <laughs> you don't know, or he didn't. The article before the podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, right. That's happened a week ago. Farmer. Well, that's. Is... Don't you get charged immediately? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Just like I don't know. So if you ask me before what my podcast is like, this it's like a bunch of fucking idiots who don't know anything about anything, but still debating it. <laughs> Did you read it? No, but this is the truth, mate. I'm telling you. It sounds correct, so it probably is, eh? That's the podcast. And then a bunch of screaming. Oh, well, I have another story uh, that I haven't talked about. I was going to try and make a joke, a uh, stand-up bit out of it, but I just think it's too confusing. So, at my warehouse that I've, that I've had for a while now, it's surrounded by brothels, right? It's just, the warehouse is... <laughs> It's just fucking surrounded by brothels, and that's kind of the only thing there. It's like brothels and then a couple of metalwork things. So, and that, we didn't need that bottle of callback. We ended up with a move, okay? The next kind of yells out bottle is going to get bottled. <laughs> the bottle <laughs> Because that was me getting bottled. Fuck you all. Um, so, yeah, I, what happened was this was like a, a Sunday afternoon. So, no one works in a warehouse district on Sunday, not even the prostitutes. <coughs> um, they're all at church. Thank you for forgiveness. <laughs> um, so what happened was uh, me and Jazz were driving down the road, there's no one in sight, and then we see this dude in a massive long trench coat. I'm like, oh, he's probably a fan. Uh, <laughs> massive long trench coat, and he, he was a Nazi. 
And you know when someone's like, you're a Nazi, and it's, it turns out that they've just said like one misogynistic joke? Not that, like an actual Nazi. He was wearing a swastika armband, he was not a costume, he was by himself, and he had a no massive- shit it wasn't a costume. No one's like, oh, what are you doing as Ben to Ben's dress? On Sunday afternoon, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Nazi. <laughs> right, and he was walking down the street with a massive black duffel bag. I'm like, this guy's definitely a fan, I should say hi. <laughs> No, he's walking down the street, like a full-on, legit Nazi walking down the street, and then he just leaves. He looks in the windows of this business. I don't know what business it was. He looks in the window, he bangs on a couple of doors, and then he just leaves this duffel bag outside, and then walks away and leaves it. And I saw this shit, and I'm like, did I just, did I just witness a hate crime, like, in preparation? Like, was that a bomb that the dude set up? I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this situation. Jazz was like, oh, let's just go. I'm like, nah. No, I, think, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I know that that's definitely what we're not supposed to do. I'm not team Jazz. I'm like, it's not 1942. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, if it was 1942, you'd be like, hey, do you need any help, mate? The guy from Cologne's love that one. You shouldn't have come. <laughs> but you can come, but don't tell everyone that you're German, dude. Like, of course, that's like oh, exactly where we're gonna go. He's here for work and trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was, I, I did what I thought I was supposed to do. I, I called triple zero, and uh, I was like, she's like, oh, police. I'm like, I'm police. I think. I think. I, I said, I think. I just, I just saw someone leave a bomb outside of business, and I gave all my details, and it sounded pretty serious, and gave the thing, and then. Uh, and then we were like, well, do we leave now? Because the police said they're on their way. And I was like, oh, what if he comes back and moves it or does some more shit? Like, what if it gets more urgent than a bomb? So I was like, well, let's just wait and see what happens. And I was also in the back of my mind thinking, fuck all those reasons. I just want to see what happens. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I might get a bit out of this. You know, if it explodes, I'm going to nail in my brain. But at least it might be funny. You know, <laughs> you know it might, might fuck up my head a bit, but Christian still performs. <laughs> You'll be next. <laughs> so we waited, and uh, we waited. Okay, so here's the thing. I called in a bomb threat from a Nazi. How long do you think it took for the police to arrive? Yeah. Yeah. A minute? You would think? No. How long? I called the police for a week and a half. <laughs> we sat there for 40 minutes. 40 fucking minutes, and, the, and we knew the police you station should have called two days. <laughs> And 40 fucking minutes we went there, we left, and we decided, oh, then I guess they're not coming. Me and Jazz left, and then we saw a police car drive past us as we were leaving with the sirens on, and then we were like, wait, do you do? Let's see what happens. So we drove straight back, and uh, <clears throat> we were sitting there in the car, and uh, the Nazi guy saw the police car, and then he started running away, and the police car were going down the wrong street, they went down the wrong street, and then they came up and they stopped next to me and Jazz, me and Jazz in her car. And then they went down the wrong street again while the Nazi was running away. So I hopped out of the car and I went up to the cops and I was like, oh, just so you know, Nazi saw you and he's running away. He just went down there. Like normally, not a stitch, but if you're Hitler, I'll make an exception. You know? Like I feel like whenever people go no snitching under any circumstances, I tend to think that there are a little, a few loopholes for that yeah. one. You know? As you get older, being a snitch is the greatest joy you will ever experience. What's the weakest thing, like the lowest grade thing you've ever snitched on? Oh, I called the cops on someone pouring water over the edge of the balcony. <laughs> of course it got on me. In an, in an unregistered car? And 
and I said, hey, you were making us. <laughs> Because it turns out that Jazz forgot to renew her rego like three days before, uh, and, I, and he just looked at me. You know, you're in an unregistered car, and I just looked at him. I said, uh, "There's a Nazi who went the bomb outside of business, <laughs> running away from you, and you're worried about registration." He went over there, man, and then I just walked back to the car, and they made the right decision and chased the Nazi guy, but we had to leave because we would have got a fine. I never found out what happened. <laughs> and Bob, I don't know, I rocked up but the business was still there, so I guess not. He probably just went to an apartment building and poured water or something. <laughs> and then you shot him out and Christian got it. That was one of the darkest, most amazing days of my life. It was look, I say water to make it like oh, petty, it was it was beer. No wonder they took a week and a half to come. No. And then I I uh, I thought I said to the because I called triple, I called the police station because I was like, this is "That's a good move." This isn't a triple zero call. I don't want to waste important people's time. And then the guy on the phone clearly had his eyes rolled the whole time. He's like, I was talking call. to him. He was like, "You need to call triple zero for that." I was like, "What? Really? Is this an emergency? Is beer on the floor? Like, no. I just need to vent my rage for these youths. I feel so angry. Someone needs to pay." So. I was like, I won't call triple zero, I won't. So I got home and I was like, I need to call triple zero. So I called triple zero and I was really polite to the lady on the phone. Uh, uh, police, fire over. I'm like, it's not an emergency. It's okay, um, but police, please. <laughs> and then they talk, if you've ever called- It's not an emergency, but I will waste your time. Yes. And then they, they yell all these numbers out, like they connect you. The 412, Penny, this is a 05, Oscar 9544, go ahead, go ahead. And I'm like, um, sorry guys, this is an emergency. Um, some youths poured some, some beer on, over a balcony and um, it got on me and, and that's not allowed, I shouldn't do that. And then the, the lady taking the call was like, right? Next level snitch mode. Next level? Well, so, I don't think so. But then she's typing away, I give her the address and she says to me, this isn't a joke, she, she just nonchalantly goes, oh, by the way, I'm a fan, I like your videos. And I was like, I'm sorry? I'm, and because I sound like a woman on the phone, I was like, I, my name, what, Ma Margaret? Um, Ma yep, okay, just please deal with the youths. And then I hung up the phone and I felt so good about myself. <laughs> so, um, and now it's like I walk down the street and I just look for youths doing things with my phone ready. That's and because right. a policeman said I could call triple zero for that, I mean, What's lower than Hold just... Hold the Hello, excuse me, I'm gonna charge 30 cents for sauce. <laughs> I need a SWAT team. That's <laughs> You know, actually, speaking of that, when, when we called the cops, right, this is before they had arrived, we called triple zero and they said, oh, we'll send someone immediately. And then 40 minutes of gone by, we left, and then I got a call from the police station where it's at, next to the warehouse, and he called and he's like, yeah, mate, did you, uh, did you report the bomb threat? And I was like, yeah, that was me. And he goes, okay, so um, uh, what exactly was suspicious about it? I said, uh, a Nazi <laughs> left a bomb outside of business. He goes, yeah. Did you fax him a picture of a swastika? Like, I don't know what to say. I was, he's like, yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Alright, we'll send someone. <laughs> My favourite part of that story is it took them 40 minutes, but they still came with the sirens going. Yeah. Like, they yeah. like, quickly! <laughs> like, where were they coming from? I don't know. Fucking obviously from the Nazis, because they didn't see a problem with it. You know what's another thing about the warehouse district that I'm in? There's so many brothels around, and I always just assume, like, you know, if you're a prostitute, you must be making heaps of money, because it's not exactly everyone's first career choice. But every time I walk past the brothel, I just see them, like, the cars parked outside are just, like, you know, Priuses and Hondas. <laughs> and I'm thinking, fuck, man. They have fuel No, they have fuel economy, dude. It's 2019, dude, people, like, it doesn't matter how much money you're making, that's a sensible car to drive to. Oh, well, if they really want to be sensible and they're making money, they should be rolling around in Teslas. Because think about that, they can drive Uber and give suck jobs in the back and the car drives. That's a genius idea. Uber like a business model, though. What? Just like Uber blow, like an Uber blowjob. No 
one trademark this, by the way, this stays in the room. I never thought about having sex in a Tesla while it's taking you somewhere. All right, this is Shark Tank now. You guys are the sharks. We're going to pitch you Uber Jizz. And that's what she's doing. What we should call is we should just keep Uber Paul. You have to be calm, pulling at the bottom Hey, cunt, you know what you came to, all right? Don't you be You've been listening to this shit for 150 episodes. I'm going to talk about cum pulls and cum. You're lucky there isn't actual pulls of cum on the floor. Right? <laughs> Sorry. What's the thing? What? Sex in cars while they take places. Hey, fake taxi. Yeah, fake taxi. Oh, oh. Bang bus? Have you ever seen the bang bus? Is that like Bang Brothers where you watch and they're like, they pick up an unsuspecting person. <laughs> and then I love those unsuspecting persons because they're like, oh my god, I wasn't expecting this at all, but I've brought heaps of lube and I also I've, I've got wearing lingerie and I've got fake tits and also I'm Lisa Ann who's been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> So him and the, another mate were in a car and they were with their mum and they a fake taxi came up and the mum was going, what's fake taxi? What's fake taxi? What do you mean fake taxi came up? Or, uh, I don't know. Like conversation? Yeah, conversation. With right. their mum? Uh, yeah, anyway. And the mum was like, what's fake taxi? And they were giggling in the back and she goes, I'm going to Google it. And they didn't stop her. So, like, <laughs> so the mum's just Googling her. She's like, oh, it's probably like, you'd think it's like a video game, like crazy. Actually, you know what? If you've never heard that it was a porn thing, you'd probably just think it's like a funny video. Right? No, or Shady business, like you get in the car and you're like, yeah, to uh, can I get to to Flint Street? And he goes, ah, this isn't a taxi. Get out. And then he sticks it in you. <laughs> but like, yeah, the mum googled her and then she's just like, what the fuck? She just like, yeah. yeah and I was like, dude, I saw her like the next day. I was like, why did you let your mum Google that? And he's like, oh, it's a bit of a good laugh, wasn't it? <laughs> well, have you played cards against humanity with your parents? Because no. I made that mistake and I had to describe to my mother. And I might have some. I wanted to. That was a weird thing. Uh, <laughs> what, what felching was. And if you're not sure what felching is, um, I've had this explained to oh me. Oh god, I thought you were going to say you've done that. No, this has actually been explained just to me. Just before, before it's explained, I didn't know what it was. Just before it's explained, this is an all ages event. Is there anyone under 18 here? Great. So there'll be a lot of people that need this explained. Oh, use code words? Is that oh, no, no, can fun? Fun? <laughs> They've all got shit parents, that's their fault. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 
doesn't count if they pull out. There are only cats that come inside you. Everyone knows that. Gross. Um, yeah, I had a couple of guests pull out and then it was it was just going to be me and Luke and we were like, oh, we can't do that because then it's just going to be a fucked version of the Luke and Lewis show. We'll definitely lose the radio. 1060, have you ever been felt? <laughs> Jenny Craig. Well, I did Weight Watchers and I did. 
Hey, do you say it doesn't work? <laughs> I tried it, bro, put on three kilos. What, what Jenny happen? Craig or taking drugs? Ah, oh, okay. Stupid. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, stop it. I saw a video of Weed Fit really works, actually. Weed Fit really works? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but like that was like such an obscure reference. I didn't even get it, and it was my video. It was like the worst part of that video as well. Now, you won't stop. You brought it up. Thank you. So don't do the Wii Fit. Oh, I just like wanked on a Wii Fit video. Like it's not high art, but it's comedy. You know. Like, I mean, is it either of those things? I really wanted it because I was a kid and I called the mum into buying it by telling her about the Wii Fit because she's into fitness and I was like, oh, it'll help you get fit and shit. And then she got it and she did it for like one day and she hated it. And, and then she was just, just like, fuck this Super Mario. And then... Yeah, and then I just played Super Smash Bros with her and she got became a bit stuck. Maybe I've texted you that play before. Huh? Maybe I've texted you that play before. Take speed and then play Wii Sports. That's a pretty good idea. I mean, it's, it's like, is that hard? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff doing some fucking weird shit, aren't they? Like, <laughs> you ask for guts on TV, bitch. Since you text his feet. Welcome to the German fucker. First, speed, then, we fit. You will zoom me into the TV, maybe lose an arm. Hey, that's five kilos right there. Uh, classic hands. <laughs> I just want to do anything. Up eating. I want to do anything but talk about we fit. <laughs> it's worse than felching. <laughs> we what felch. else, Lewis? <laughs> Kids look like that. <laughs> like, stop it, Princess Peach. <laughs> That's the worst. How old is that guy? 
It doesn't know. Do you know? Wait, it's in his 30s. In his 30s, yeah. It's in his 30s. I've never met them. <laughs> What's their name? So do you have their real name in your phone? He, yes. Or is it just like... Because I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, okay. We'll call it James. Uh, are, you good, are you looking forward to watching that? Or are you Yeah, offended? well it came during the, um, while I was waiting out there, and I was like, oh, you know what I'm doing tonight? <laughs> yeah, back into that video, obviously. <laughs> I thought that was implied. That's um, amazing. Yeah. Let me, let me so check it. Luckily, these two boys up here are safe. I'll, I'll check the text uh, that I've been sent since starting. It's just, uh, <laughs> just, it's just you. Jazz saying, I've gone home for a year. What have I got? I've just copped a video of a felch. Uh, <laughs> So, I don't know what's worth. No, what's not worth. Ugh, I can't speak. It doesn't matter. <laughs> How long have we been going for, please? About an hour. About an hour. Is it time? Oh, time? with so much aggression. About an hour? About an hour, you can't. Is it, is it uh, time, Lewis? Yes, it's time. Okay. It's time. So, you guys will all know about the uh, campaign I've been running to win the Australian Podcast Awards, right? This is what I was doing. Oh, we're doing that after. <laughs> We've got something more fucked up than this. <laughs> it might rival felching now that we think about it. Um, so, you guys know about the campaign I've been running to win the Australian Podcast Awards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Voted 10 times? Yeah. Who, who voted? Okay, who in here voted more than once? <laughs> this is so rude. <laughs> everyone just put their hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking everyone. Okay, well, I've got some bad news. <laughs> And it's all your fault. <laughs> so, what happened was, the last I checked, let me get this email up. This That's true, this is your fault. This I have heard about you encouraging people to rig the voting. Okay, look, there's a lot of misconceptions about me encouraging people to Dude, rig there's recorded audio of it. Okay, play it. <laughs> there's, see, there's no evidence I <laughs> I didn't tell, like, maybe, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I got an email on uh, a couple of days ago, and at this point, I was winning by about a thousand votes. Oh, oh, yeah, I was winning by a thousand votes, and I was smashing podcasts that were ten times the size of me. That's how fucking powerful we are as a collective, right? <laughs> we were fucking so far ahead, and then I get an email. Because no one else wants to win this stupid fucking award. Like, <laughs> The shit of mine is like, you're like going like, oh guys, wouldn't it be so funny if I won this award? But secretly, you're like on Instagram, hey guys, super big achievement. Like, <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for voting. I'm humbled to accept this award. And you're like, and on the podcast, you're like, isn't it so funny? But then you're going to put on your fucking resume for the rest of your life. Nah, yes. me, man. That was super funny, though. Okay, so, so what, I, what I wanted to do, and why I keep saying the podcast, is it's a tiny little award. I wanted to go up and get the award and then talk shit about the sponsors. Because I thought that would be very funny. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny, right? Uh, then, anyway, I get an email a couple of days ago. Dear Mr. Spears. Stern. Very stern. It has come to our attention, even sterner. <laughs> Dear Mr. Spears, it has come to our attention that you have made a number of statements disparaging and attacking the Australian podcast awards. <laughs> Nowhere near done with this email. <laughs> you have also incited people to disrupt the voting process. <laughs> it also appears that most of the votes for your entry are fraudulent. <laughs> Which is fucking true because someone sent me a program that they had built specifically. <laughs> I guess. Tick. <laughs> Any 
Anyway, you won't be surprised to learn that your entry has been disqualified. <laughs> from the competition on the basis that you have breached our terms of entry. Please do not waste our time again. Yours sincerely, someone girdler. One sensible laugh. Um, now, I did... Hey? <laughs> We're going for 20 words! <laughs> joke about it heaps. So I sent him back an email of my own. <laughs> and I said, Dear Mr. Girdler, Stern, <laughs> thank you for your email. I can assure you that my comments about the awards are all in jest, designed to entertain the listeners of Spearhead Sundays. I sincerely think what you and your team are doing is great and a genuinely brilliant and innovative way to promote the Australian podcast scene. It's a shame this misunderstanding has occurred. I hope this email can rectify the situation we find ourselves in. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> Kissing ass so much. Okay, well. Belgian Mr. Gertler. <laughs> now, look, and you may learn something from me. Uh, the best way to piss someone off heaps is to be really nice first. <laughs> Come in with like a Yes. So, hope this email can rectify the situation we find ourselves in. If you are still unsure as to whether I was making disparaging statements or telling jokes, you can simply refer to the category under which Spirit Sundays was entered in the awards. If I recall correctly, you will see Spirit Sundays is entered under the comedy section. <laughs> as a rule of thumb, comedy has been known to make fun of things and contain jokes. To clear up any confusion, I've attached a link to Oxford Dictionary's definition. <laughs>
and then uh, that was a few days ago, and he didn't send me my 30 bucks. Dear Mr. Gertler, <laughs> I'm sending this email to follow up on the status of my entry fee refund as I have not received any confirmation of pay payment. After perusing the terms and conditions of the Podcast Awards website, I don't see any terms that say entry fees are kept even when entries are denied. Last I checked, Standard Victor's business practice does not include taking money for a service, then refusing to provide that service but keeping the money. Blow on my back details. <laughs> but that one was just to ruin his weekend. <laughs> don't even want my money. Taking Mr. Girl to the town. Yeah, man. What a sad man. I know, right? Mike, no you. Uh... <laughs> Australia's always so You should just go to the awards and then just when they present it, just get up and just take Just do a Kanye list. Yeah. I would love that. Shameless, I believe you finished. <laughs> I'm real happy for you. But Spirit Sundays had the most votes despite cheating. <laughs> so, what we're going to do instead is uh, I think that as I got the most votes, uh, we should hold our own podcast awards ceremony uh, ourselves. So I be Mr. Gertler? You be Mr. Gertler. Good, good about it. Uh, Christian, you can be the MC, and what you have to do is, is just tell everyone you want. Okay. So I'll just sit here with a bad attitude. Yeah, and I'll be, I'll be next to you. Yeah. Give my fucking money card. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, we've been bullied into announcing tonight's winner, which is... Read it! Don't. <laughs> Gertler, I'll felch it. <laughs> that was the question. Oh, that was great, that was great. It's Sp Spa Head Sundays by Luke. Say it right! Oh, <laughs> Spa Spe Head Sundays. Oh, my God! No, no. oh, 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 my God. This is amazing. I won the Australian. Part where I answer emails sent in by listeners. 
sounds like the best part of the podcast. No, it's if you've heard it, you really want to try it. Oh, I am all in. <laughs> now, here we go. Okay. Now, you guys may remember from a couple of podcasts ago the email entitled, I Cucked My Best Friend's Dad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you didn't update Christian. We have an update. <laughs> you, you need to give Christian. I've got the original email here for context. Okay, so we're going to go. I think it's probably the best email I've ever got. So I'm going to go through both of them. Okay. So uh, you guys remember this year? Yeah. <laughs> so deflating. <laughs> it's dude. It's fucked. All right. Hey Lewis, I've got a shit show of a story for you. Call me Dick because that's what I am. <laughs> Bit of backstory, I've been friends with uh, my friend Chad since primary school. Chad's mum is hot as fuck, probably helped by the fact she's a fitness freak with fake tits. Needless to say, going over to Chad's house was always a memorable experience. As we were best friends and we lived in the same suburb, I spent a lot of time at Chad's house and subsequently with his mum too. Of course, I never told Chad about how hot his mum was because that would be a weird conversation to have. I'm pretty sure he's embarrassed by her uh, sometimes. Now, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit with him. Um, everything has been normal with her up until very recently. Just a few months ago, his mum started to want to spend more time with me, such as asking for help with household stuff like gardening and cooking. She began asking me if I had a girlfriend. I don't, warning sign, uh, and other personal questions. The questions slowly became more personal, and I found that she's very open about sex. Very open. Some might even say open relationship. Uh, and would even ask what positions and fetishes I like. Obviously, it wasn't difficult to see the hints, and it wasn't long before she straight up asked for sex. It was a little weird given she's my friend's mum, but fuck it, 40 19 year old never turns down a free pussy. <laughs> we began fucking often, usually whenever both of us had free time and when no one would catch us. Everything had been hunky dory until a couple of days ago after we had sex. She confessed that she's, she, ever she confessed and told me that ever since we've started having sex, she's been recording us using a camera hidden in the room. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Turns out Whoa. her husband is a cuck who likes to see other men dig his wife, and in fact, it was his idea from the start that we should have sex. That explains why our behavior changed so suddenly. But if you thought fucking my best friend's mom and cucking his dad was was bad, it gets worse. She told me that her husband wants to watch us in person next time and for her to humiliate him while we have sex. I told her I'd think about it for now. <laughs> what should I do, Lewis? I'm a cunt, but I don't know if I'm that much of a cunt, although it would make for a good story for the podcast. Wow. And also desperate if he's asking you for advice. Yeah. What advice did you give him? Well, I just he chucked up his bone ass. <laughs> I told him, what are you going to need, mate? It's a funnel and a straw. <laughs> Get down to the bottle in Germany and you'll be slain. Um, no, what I told him was, I told him, Get the fuck out now. Yeah. Because I was like, Sure, whatever, if they do that in their own life, who cares? But what he's running the risk of is destroying his friend's life forever. And the marriage. No, not the marriage, because the yeah. husband is into it. Well, there's a risk of that, yeah, but the husband's often, into it. Like, and they've actually done it before. Often, like, you had another cuck situation on the podcast where it did ruin the, the marriage. Yeah. So often, like, the guy thinks he's into it, and then he's watching another dude rattle his wife, and he's like, not that into it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have stuck to the pool this time. <laughs> I told him it's that... in the back of the cab. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, don't, because uh, if you get caught, imagine if you're the son, right? Your best friend, not only do you find out that he's fucked your mum, you also find out that it was your dad's idea. And I basically told him, if you, I told him firstly that he's the new dad of the family. Because <laughs> he's just big dog the yes. mum, you know, big dog the other dad, he's become the new dad, even though he's only 19. He's, the, he's got two sons now, you know, of the dad and the son, both his sons. But yeah, but imagine if that actually happened. You couldn't trust your mum or your dad around your friends. You never have mates over ever. Well, I'm just trying to put myself in his shoes and imagine my mum and dad and my best friend. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you okay with it? Well, I think I'm 30 
to and I've done a lot of things that I, I'm just like, okay, well, they're old and they obviously need a bit of, you know, extra But it's help. your mate, though. Too close to you. But see, I don't have I think that's bad friends. friends. And then I I'm like plot twist. Well, maybe I should be your mum. <laughs> you know what? Go for your life. <laughs> like, I, I, I think in this situation, I think I'm different because I'm a fucking weirdo, but I think, <laughs> yeah, that was probably no. Yeah, just run away. Who thinks Christian's wrong? <laughs> yeah, run away. What do you guys think? Should he, should he have done it? Well, what about if Chad's into it as well? Watching his dad request his floor. Oh, so it's like, it's like Chinese, layers of cucking. It's, it's like, like a Chinese, Chinese cup. Like, <laughs> Chinese whispers cuck edition. Yeah. Oh, tell him, tell him to fuck mum. <laughs> fuck my wife. <laughs> and then like his ultimate fetish is like having it talked about on a podcast. <laughs> and he's just sitting in the room. <laughs> the whole family's like gathered around. Do you have an update? Is that why? Yeah. Oh. So I got a new email, guys. So this is a fucking banger. So whenever it's a good email, generally they ignore my advice. <laughs> well, considering your girlfriend had to leave for this part, I feel like this is going to get a bit intense. Oh I'm yeah. Get offended again. <laughs> You're going to be. This is great. I don't know why you hate this part of the podcast. Dude. Destroying relationships. Okay, update. I cut my best friend's dad. <laughs> what a hero. <laughs> I'm all heroes in their caves. <laughs> hey Luke, it's me again. I've got a spicy update for you. Oh, actually, also, hey man, are you here tonight? I never confirmed the city. I'm being this. <laughs> I don't I actually don't know. <laughs> it's Radio Mike. <laughs> Oh, 
was on the fence about it. I know you said the best thing to do would be to get out while no one is hurt. But at the same time, uh, she gives a good fuck and I'm horny. <laughs> Sorry, man. She's good at sucking dick and I was horny. That's like not a fucking explanation at all. I told them I've never done anything like this before and it was all weird to me, but the mum insisted I at least give it a chance since, since it doesn't hurt to try new things. It doesn't hurt you, it just destroys your man's life. <laughs> I, was, I was sure I was going to regret it, but in the end I agreed on the condition there was no cameras. A couple of days pass, we finally did it. Fuck me. <laughs> He's where it gets good. Because <laughs> this guy was descriptive as fuck. <laughs> The dad was just sitting in the corner, jacking off while I digged his wife. She would regularly humiliate him by saying things like, he's so much better than you, or keep watching you pathetic bitch. It's so true though. He's the dad now. Yeah. He needs to take the fucking wedding ring off that guy's head and wear it. It was such an unusual experience, but I won't lie, I actually kind of liked it. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is the part that Jazz doesn't like. I actually kind of enjoyed it, except for the part at the very end. That sounds like my podcast. I actually enjoyed it, except for the part at the very end. I finished inside her. And then she went over to her husband, and I shit you not, made him lick her cum clean. That's a front belch. Uh, we've got another one planned next week. I'm a fucking 
fucking arsehole, at least he knows, uh, and I'm not going to turn it down, even if her cuck of a husband watches. One time he was watching, he was moaning a little loud while he was watching. I just told him to shut the fuck up and he was alive. <laughs> like he said, I'm pretty much the alpha of the family. <laughs> listening and supporting Speared Sunnies for 150 episodes. I'm here with Luke because he forgot to tell you something very important I'm during the show. going on tour. Yes. And I was like, yeah, man, it'll be so great to promote my shows when I do the live podcast. We're talking about Felchin and I forgot. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going on tour, the tambourine tour. So if you if you wanted to come see me live, I'd love to see you there. I've seen the show. It's really good. You can get tickets at lukehidgel.com slash shows. Just lukehidgel.com. Simpler this year. Um, and if you want uh, a discount code, use code FELCH for 20% off tickets. Yes. Uh, we'll have to get that sorted. Um, You're not going to do that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Full price tickets for, available for on For multiple Luke reasons. Website. One, fuck yeah. having a discount code. And two... Full price felch. All right, I'm all about it. <laughs> if you want, if you want, to, if you want me to felch you, you're not getting twenty percent. 
So 30 bucks for, for a felch, bring a straw. LukeKidgel.com. <laughs>